Okay, this is lecture four and it's about loops. So let's get started. Uh, moving this thing, all right. Okay. Um, while. Basically, while loops are the, the, the simplest, they have the simplest syntax, but they are really the hardest loop to implement. They're the, mo the most error prone. Um, this right here is all you need to make a while loop. You can have while, your condition, and then inside here it can be system dot line a or some any type of code the that you that you want to execute okay um, and uh, conditions are the same as as an if statement any expression which value is to true or false okay so this thing that's in here is just any statement that's true or false it can be the word true or false well, if it's false, it never gets executed. Um, and what the and and it can be like i less than five, x less than ten, anything that actually values the true or false. And the way the loop works is when you go uh, when you go into the loop, you know, you're running your code sequentially like this. When you go into the loop, if the condition is actually true, then this stuff gets executed. And when you get to the end of the loop, you go back to the beginning and check again if the condition is true. And if it is true, then this stuff gets executed again. And then you go when you get to the end of the loop, you go back to the beginning again, and then you check again. And if you can notice, um, we have something uh, if we have something um, that we can have certain things. Uh, it's very easy to have an infinite loop with a while loop. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, if you just forget to increment your variables and make your conditions work correctly, you're going to have an infinite loop. Um, so these are two examples of, of, of while loops. Here we have one on, on the left, in counter, we declare an in counter equal to zero, while counter less than stop value, we have a code, and then counter plus plus. So this is the actual correct way to implement a while loop that's not going to be infinite. And we know for sure it's not going to be infinite. And when you see something, we know for sure it's not going to be infinite because every run of the loop we're incrementing counting counter by one, and stop value is something. Stop value is like 15 or 20 or some integer. And if counter starts at zero and we increment it, you know, every single run of the loop we increment it by one. At some point, is going to be stop being less than this stop value. Okay, so this is we know for sure this is not an infinite loop. And um, the way you should look, you you should look at a simple loop like this one, is the way that uh, uh that you interpret certain expressions in common speech. Like if somebody if you're talking to somebody and they they use the phrase when in Rome, for example. Um, you're not going to go through the thought process of thinking, oh, he's using the expression when in Rome, used as the Romans do, which probably comes from, at some point in the past, somebody coined that expression because they were not from Rome, and Romes were notoriously intolerant of anybody who wasn't Roman, and uh, they even consider them barbarians, so this person who coined this expression must have been a barbarian trying to pass for a Roman in Rome so that he wouldn't get ostracized. That is ridiculous. You would never think that way. If you hear the expression when in Rome, you're simply going to think that the person saying it is going to um, start acting as those around him act. Okay, that's all you're going to take from it. You're not going to go through the thought process. And similarly here, when you see this right here, you're just going to know that this loop is going to run. Let's say that let let's say that you know the stop value is 10. This loop is going to run 10 times, from counter when counter is zero, one, two, three, all the way to nine. If this is if counter is uh, uh, one for example, and this is ten, then this loop is going to run nine times. When counter is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and if this loop is like this, um, then this loop is going to run ten times. When counter is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Incidentally, as you you know may be able to infer, this loop that I have up right now, this right here, will run ten times just as this will. Okay, they both serve the purpose of running whatever code is in here ten times. And uh, uh, then we have another example of a, a little bit more complex of a loop, uh, boolean. Let's say we you set it, we we use a boolean value should run for example, and we set it to true initially because if we set it to false, then you know if we set this value to false right here, then when we come into the loop, while should run should run as false, so we skip it, so we never actually execute that loop. Um, 
So that's why if we're going to initialize a Boolean value, we need to initialize it in a way that's actually going to enable our loop to run. Okay. And what is what is what this loop here is doing is just going to um, execute this code over and over and over until some condition that you have inside an if statement in here becomes true. And when it becomes true, you set should run to false. And then when you, so since should run equals false is the last line of that loop execution, when it comes back up here, should run is false. And then you exit out of the loop and then you start executing the next stuff after the loop. Okay. Um, Finally, this is your for loop. This is the easiest loop to code, but it's the hardest syntax. It's the, the syntax that confuses people the most and is the hardest one to accept. And you'll want to stay away from for loops just because they seem complicated, but trust me, they're not. Um, they're actually the simplest one to implement. So this is the syntax right here. You know, for we declare a counter variable, then we have a semicolon, then we have a stopping point for our, our with uh, that involves our counter variable and some other variable and then we have I, our increment okay nine times out of ten the increment is just going to be i plus plus but you could also increment i by two every loop okay nobody's stopping you from doing that even though if you're doing that there's probably a better more efficient way to do what your code is doing without executing an empty loop every time your code runs okay so anyway um Okay, so the way this loop works, basically, you start uh, the way it's written here, you're starting out when uh, this loop is going to run for the values of i from 1 all the way to stop value. So let's say stop value, let's say, um, for the sake of argument right here, we have stop value is equal to 10, right? So this loop is going to run for the values of i from 1 all the way to 10. And incidentally, that is exactly equivalent to having this loop. Actually, I'm going to cut paste this whole thing. That is exactly equivalent to having this loop. Stop value again, less than stop value, and starting at zero. I mean, so long as the code that you execute in here doesn't depend on the actual value of i, if you just want to uh, use this loop to run something ten times, this loop is equivalent to this one. Okay? Um, and that's because this loop also runs 10 times. It starts out when i is equal to 0 and it runs all the way till i is equal to 9. Why 9? Because it runs for as long as i is less than stop value and it increments one at a time. So the highest i is ever going to get while uh, 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 such that you're still running this loop is 9. Because the second i hits 10, the loop is going to start stop running. Okay? So essentially what's happening, to recap here, you know, you're setting the counter variable to a starting value. You're incrementing by 1 at the end of each run of the loop and you know you're running until this condition no longer is met uh, so let's look at some concrete uh, uh, examples I'm gonna comment out all this stuff here okay okay so this is you know a while loop very simple loop again you know you should be able to look at this and be able to tell that this loop is going to run what? 10 times. Because it starts at 1 and it runs all the way to 10. Because, you know, it runs when until all the way until it increments by 1 every run of the loop and it runs all the way till counter is equal to 10. Because it keeps running so long as counter is less than or equal to 10. And what does it do? What's the code that it executes? It prints while loop counter, then the actual value of the counter, then comma space. So, in counter starts at 1. The first value is going to print then is while loop counter 1, comma, space. So then counter plus plus, now counter is 2. So the next value is going to print is while loop counter 2, comma, space. Then it's going to print while loop counter 3, comma, space, and so on and so forth. And if we just execute this, we will see in the bottom that I was correct. So it prints while loop counter 1, while loop counter 2, while loop counter 3, while loop counter 4, blah, 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 all the way to while loop counter 10. There you go. Okay. And uh, right. There, so let's hide this. Let's comment that. And now I'm going to uncomment this one and uh, run this one. Okay. So what's this one doing? Counter is starting at zero. This, um, um, well, then you have your Boolean should run is true. And then you have while should run system the out the print line while loop counter counter comma space so counter started at zero the first run of the loop 
it should run true yes because we just set it manually it's going to print while loop counter zero comma space then counter gets incremented by one so counter is not going to now going to be one is one greater than four no so then we just finish the loop and we get back to the top of the loop should run is it true yes because we set it manually and we haven't changed it so we print out we remember we had increased counter to one so we print out while loop counter one comma space counter plus plus and counter so now counter is two is two greater than four no so this gets ignored and now we get back to the top of the loop it should run true yes because again we set it manually in the beginning and we haven't changed it so now counter is two we print out system the other print light while loop counter two comma space so what this loop is going to print out in essence is you know while loop counter with the starting value zero then comma space while loop counter one while loop counter two while loop counter three and uh, while loop counter four and then after it prints while loop counter four well it increments counter to five and then it says if counter greater than four so if it's five it is greater than four then it runs this so it said should run to false so now when it comes back to the top of the loop should run as false so it skips the body of the loop and it gets to the end and it executes whatever's next which in this case is nothing so let's see that in action and there we go like I said it uh, prints while loop counter zero while loop counter one two three and four and then stops okay and finally here's a, a, a little simple simple for loop um, 4 in i equals 0 it increments by 1 every run of the loop and it runs so long as i is less than 10 so how many times is it going to run? it's going to run 10 times because it's going to run for i equals 0 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and all the way to 9 okay and what uh, all it does is just print the value of i followed by a comma and a space so if we execute this we're just going to see that it's going to print the numbers 0 through 9 separated by a comma and a space there we go and what you're seeing here you know is that this i is changing with every loop iteration so this little two lines of code right here is equivalent to writing this whole thing okay and i'm going to uncomment that so i can prove it to you and the only thing i'm going to do is in between the execution of the for loop i'm going to print this um blank new line character so that I can separate so you know, since all of this prints in a single line then I print do a print line with an empty so I have a line break and then I do all of this stuff which is going to print the same exact thing as this now we're going to see it in action okay so like I said you know this was going to print the values from 0 all the way to 9 which it did this, this is the output of the for loop and then this is the output of all the separate statements, which are pretty obvious, you know. This is on the other print line 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on and so forth. So what you what you get from this is that loops are to repeat code. That's what they are for. And you should be able to recognize when there's a simple loop like this one, you should be able to recognize immediately. Taking it for granted, not having to think deeply about it you should be able to recognize how many times it's going to run. You are expected to know that and you will need to know that for the AP exam. Okay? So just take it for granted and, and sort of like practice this until it comes naturally to you to figure out how many times this runs. You see, you know, if, if it starts at 1 for example and runs so long as i is less than 10, this is going to run 9 times. Because it's going to run for i equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. And if it's like this, less than or equal to 10, this is going to run 10 times because, because it's also going to run for i equals 10. And if it's like this, for example, i equals 5, 1 to 5, 1, 1 to 4 really. So this runs from for, for i equals 1 to 4, so it's going to run 4 times. And this runs for i equals 0 to 4, so it's going to run 5 times. And so on and so forth. That's really, really important. Um, for your continued success in this class and, and for passing the AP test and getting those sweet, sweet, juicy college credits. Okay?